So now imagine that the interest rate goes down. Now bonds are less attractive because the return is lower. So firms will buy less bonds and invest more in physical capital because the opportunity cost of investing which is the interest rate you, you could have had when uh, uh, buying bonds is lower now so you will increase investment but when you increase investment demand your aggregate demand also goes up because investment is a component of aggregate demand so these provokes a shift upwards of our aggregate demand line and equilibrium with supply will be reached at a higher output but let's see the process step by step so first the interest rate remember is the opportunity cost of investing if the opportunity cost of investing is lower because the return uh, of, how, of buying bonds which is the nominal interest rate goes down then investment will go up but investment is just a component of aggregate demand so aggregate demand will also go up so this is what happens it goes up like this and your new aggregate demand will be this guy so now, since this is supply and this is demand, there will be an excess demand for goods. That means that for this period, firms will be overwhelmed by the demand. So they will have to lower their uh, inventories. They will have to use their uh, stored inventories in, to, in order to be able to cope with the excess demand but in next period they will be able to adjust output in order to meet the demand so they uh, they know that what they produced in the previous period was not enough so uh, right now in the next period they will just produce more so we move up here because we are producing more but we realize that if we have more income we have more disposable income and then we consume more because consumption is just a function of uh, disposable income and also we invest more and that all adds up to an increase in aggregate demand for goods again in the next period firms will increase their production to be able to cope with the demand and Again, income is higher, so there is shock in aggregate demand. Remember, consumption goes up and investment also goes up. And in the next period, firms will increase a little bit more their production and so on. And this process that you can see goes like this until it means a new equilibrium is what we call the multiplier. The multiplier effect. You see more demand that brings more supply that brings more income that brings more aggregate demand and little 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 more changes over time will bring just this we want just the final effect the total effect how much will y change so we have our supply equals demand which we could just write everything in terms of y here we take that dividing over there and this right here is what we call the multiplier this is everything that does not depend on y times something will equal our production so what's the meaning of the multiplier imagine the multiplier was like 1.2 1.3 something like that okay so any change in any element here will be amplified by the multiplier to get another change in output so if the multiplier is higher than one it is uh, an amplification it is amplifying the shocks of these variables that uh, do not depend on y 
So in our case, it will just be well the derivative of this with respect to i, which is just this, times the change in the interest rate. But this is also negative, so negatives times negative is positive. So positive change times the multiplier turns out in a even higher change in y. So this would be the final change in our production, which is really what we see here, this big change. Now, in the graph of the uh, output as a function of the interest rate, since we have lowered the interest rate that yields an increase in output, that is just a movement along the line from 0 to 1. So, important. Uh, a change in the interest rate would uh, provoke a movement along the IS curve. 